Hey up, George. It's up, mate. Hey up, Martin Duck, mate. I'm here, aren't I? How are you? I'm all right, mate. You all right? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Better than I have been. I've been a little bit poorly this week. So, yeah, I've got to say big, big thanks for carrying the week. You've done dead, dead good. Wow, look at those. Who's made them? My missus been Is baking. Your missus been baking? That's good, isn't it? Boy, it's, it's a bit fresh and damp, isn't it? All right, well, we'll get the lawns done. Have a quick flick through the beds. And, uh, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. In a bit. See you in a bit. In a bit. Hey up, mate. Hey up, George Duck, mate. How are you? I'm alright, mate. It looks like you're. Uh, have you got it on three instead of two today? I have. I've raised the cutting level. Um, we're coming into sort of like the, our last cut of the year. Uh, a lot of people will make the mistake of cutting at, at the normal level, which is a, a little bit too low. During the winter, you want to leave your grass a little bit longer to stop moss and other pests um, taking over. So lift your mower, leave it on a higher cut on the final cut of the year uh, for the health of your lawn for spring, summer next year. Sound. Yeah, that's all. Just a little tip. All right, see you in a bit. See you later. See you later. See you later, mate. See you later. Hey, up, dog. Uh, so yeah, as well as um, doing your final cut on a higher level, um, if you've got any problems, like a few bull patches or if you've had any um, beasties, any animals digging stuff up, it's still not too late to overseed. Getting a bit late, but it's still got a chance if you've got some seed to throw down and it'll take, it'll take seed, grow, propagate, put... What's the word I'm looking for? Germinate. It should, should, it should still germinate. Um, and improve your lawn for next year. Wicked. See you in a bit. See you later. <coughs> yeah. Hey, dog mates. How are you? Um, customer of mine has gone and bought um, a load of shop bought um, uh, spring summer flowering bulbs. So we've got a uh, dark tulip and Allium, um, Allium Purple Sensation. They're beautiful bulbs. They really are, but so overpriced if you're going to get them from a from a um, garden centre. Um, I've let the customer know that we've got snowdrops, crocus, um, daffodils, alliums. We've got so many bulbs on the way uh, that I've ordered in bulk. So if you need, if you want any bulbs, do do message me. Because uh, I think we've got something like about 12,000 on the way. Um, now's the perfect time to be planting your spring summer flowering bulbs. Um, to do so, really, you'd want to dig a hole about three times depth and three times as deep as the size of the bulb. So, yeah, we'll just dig in here. That's how I do. Yeah, something like that. Of these roots. And then put them in with the furry bit, the root, at the bottom. Point your bit at the top. Cover them over. That's it. You'll have a beautiful show, you know, come come April next year. That's it. Well, we'll get the rest of these in. Hey up, George Duck, mate. Hey up, mate. You alright? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, what are you up to? Oh, just uh, removing a little bit of uh, half of the Ulster Strike of Predator, which is oh, going into this gutter and around Going into the gutter and around the window. Because it's Falco Friday. Oh, yeah. You've got to get your Falcos Get your Falcos out. Here's yeah, my Falcos, look. Oh, yeah. Have you got your Falcos? I, I have. I don't know if I can do them. Oh, I did. I caught them. Oh, anyway. Yeah, but look, but look, look at the autumnal colours of the Parthenosis as it? we're coming into autumn. It'd be a shame to lose it all, but the neighbours asked us to take it out of the gutter, so that's what we're going to do. Well, I'm going to go carry on blowing leaves. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. See you in a bit. See you in a bit.
Hey, man. Morning, Martin. What are you up to? Good morning, good morning, and happy Monday to you. It's nice that the rain stopped. Still a bit chilly, like that. Um, right, well, I'm just fixing some brackets to this trellis to, to get along the top of this wall. We've got climbing rows there. On the other side is a, a clematis that we've planted. Um, I think we're probably going to get another climbers to yeah, just, just give a little bit of um, a bit more privacy and just block out the neighbours over there. So yeah, I'm just sticking these brackets on and then attach it to the top of the wall somehow. Um, and then yeah, hey up George, look mate, hey, mate. Right, mate. Right, so I can see we've got the, the rhododendron out. It was struggling a bit here and I think we're digging this whole bed out and we're going to replant it. But we'll take the rhododendron, the pieris, the rhododendron. and this pea, uh, this hebe. Hebe's going on the front where we planted the other one. The pieris and the rhododendron, Get your rhododendrons. I'm gonna go in here somewhere. So we're gonna have that rosemary out, that's gone. Probably gonna cut back, lift and divide that mint, put it further down. So the rhododendron and the pieris here. And then that other hebe, I think there's another two hebes. They're gonna go in this border over here, George. Yes, mate. Right. Okay, okay. Bye, man. Gonna crack on. See you later. Yeah, I enjoyed cutting those ones down. Rebuilding. Hey up, George Duff, mate. Hey up, mate. Oh, yeah. Not bad, mate. That oh, tree's on a bit of a wonk, isn't it? It is. It's on a massive wonk, but we're not going to stick a donk on it. We're going to whack it on a massive stake. Um, so whenever you're staking a tree, you'll see you'll see loads of trees. I'm not going to use this stake. It's too small. I'm just going to use it as an example. People will put a stake in next to the tree and then tie it in somewhere up here. Now, that's, that's not what you should do because you need a tree to be able to have a little bit of sway to build up lignin, which will help it help help keep it keep it straight. Rigidity. Yeah. Yeah, give it give it rigidity. Yeah. So when you're putting a stake in, you want to go in low, have it on the angle that the tree's trying to go. So I'll, I'll show you in a bit once I've done it. But I'm going to put a big fat stake in here, tie it about there, and then that will give the tree plenty of movement at the top to build said lignin. The problem when you do um, stake a tree up there. Eventually, you're going to have to take that stake away, and that will become a weak point. So, the trick, you know, in high winds, it might just snap out where you've staked it. So, don't do it. Stake, stake low. Hey, See you in a bit. See you in a bit. <laughs> hey, old George. What are you up to down there, dog? Well, you'll have seen I was talking about staking this tree. Well, I've got this stake down, I've got it in the ground. I've gone in at roughly, well, about whatever degree that is, but I've gone at an angle to try and avoid the root ball of the tree to save any damage. Now, I'm just tying it in here with a purposely bought um, tree tie. You'll see in the middle that there's a little rubber block to save any chafing uh, on the tree on the new stake. Now, I'm gonna tie it in there and I'm gonna use a nail just to tie it off. But, <laughs> you got a leaf there. Um, I'm not gonna knock it all the way in because Every, every year or so, this tree's gonna get a little bit bigger and we're gonna have to loosen it off to stop it from strang strangulating, strangling uh, said tree. So we'll just leave it like that. And then as and when it's needed, we'll, we'll, we'll loosen it off. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Hey up, George. Hey, mate. mate. Hey up, Sam, look, mate. Hey, mate. How are you? All right, mate. Ah, good, good. What are you, you, mate? I'm all right, yeah. Got, hurts, got a bit of a crick in my neck now, yeah. Neck, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's fine. Uh, what have you got for lunch? I've got a uh, fried chicken sandwich. Shut sure up! Mm. Looks a bit like that. Wow. With some mayonnaise in it. That looks tasty. Pom bears, banana, gold bar. Wow. Nice. Well, you got some? Uh, I've got Poe Poe Rock. Is it? Uh, some of these crips. Big bag. Big, Big bag, boy bag. Yeah. And uh, brunch bar. Nice, nice, good stuff. Good well, you stuff. got mine. Uh, well, I had mine lunch at home because we started late because it was raining all morning. So I'm, I'm sat here with lunch jealousy, <laughs> lunch envy. Look at that. Look at it. Mm. Uh, yeah, nice. Well, right, well, enjoy. Catch it a bit.
um, that we visited a few weeks ago. First visit, we did the um, the front. Um, and we started on the back, and then today, on well, our second visit, we're doing a little bit more. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, you've probably seen before, we attacked the Coral of Savalana Contorta. Um, well, today, um, there was a quite an invasive um, grass here that we've cut down, ready to be reduced at another, uh, another time. We've reduced that ace of there. There's the purple sage, that's had a bit of a reduction. You couldn't see or get round this path, so we've, we've kind of gained that trust there, given, given the rose a bit of formative pruning. Reduced the Wygelia over there, exposed the Azalea. Um, and then we've, yeah, half moon the lawn to give that a definitive edge. Weeded through these borders. Uh, and then, and then yeah, yeah, we've stuck the stake on the tree. But you'll you'll see you'll see the tutorial about how to stick a stake on a tree in a bit. Put a big stake on it, not a big donk. Um, right, catching a bit.